in this module, we'll present the Colorado River as a case study to tie together what you've learned in earlier modules about hydrology relevant to the Western US, as well as legal and political aspects of water management in the West. In this lecture, I'll provide a geographic and physical overview of the Colorado River Basin. As you can see in this map, while the Colorado River in the lower right here does not compare with the Mississippi and the Columbia River in terms of its average flow, it is the largest river system in the southwestern region of the US and the fifth longest stream of the United States. Located in the southwestern US, the Colorado River Basin covers about 250,000 square miles, which is about the size of Texas. The main river extends about 1,450 miles from its headwaters in the Rocky Mountain to the Gulf of California. The river flows from these jagged mountain ranges to impressive canyons and vast deserts, forming the lifeline of water for many of the large cities in the southwestern US. The spectacular landscape and its long and rich history attracts millions of visitors annually to the region. 11 national parks are located within the Colorado River Basin, with the most famous being the Grand Canyon National Park. 4.5 million visitors come to the Grand Canyon alone each year, including about 25,000 who boat sections of the Colorado River within the canyon with its famous whitewater rapids. Nearly all the water in the Colorado River comes from the deep snowpack in the mountain headwaters in Colorado, Utah, and Wyoming. Once the river leaves these headwaters, it flows through mostly arid landscape that receives as little as three inches of precipitation per year. The river provides at least a portion of the water supply for over 30 million people in the US and irrigates more than 4 million acres of land inside and outside its watershed. Los Angeles, Denver, and Salt Lake City all receive significant portions of their water from the Colorado River but are located outside the river basin. If you eat salad anywhere in the US in the winter, you're probably eating lettuce that was grown in California's Imperial Valley, so you are also consuming Colorado River water. Note on this map here, the yellow highlights, these are urban and agricultural areas outside of the basin that receive Colorado River water. In addition, the river serves about 2.3 million people and about 500,000 acres of farmland in Mexico once it crosses the international border. The Colorado River flows southwest from the Rocky Mountains across the Colorado Plateau to the Arizona-Nevada border and then bends south at Lake Mead towards the Gulf of California. South of the U.S.-Mexico border, the Colorado River enters its river delta. Before the river was dammed, it fed one of the largest desert estuaries in the world with species-rich wetlands covering 3,000 square miles. Today, the estuary is only about 1% of its original size, and the river's flow usually stops about 100 miles from its mouth. The Colorado River Basin includes part of seven states of the U.S., Wyoming, Colorado, Utah, New Mexico, Arizona, Nevada, and California, as well as two Mexican states, Baja California and Sonora. The Colorado River Basin is home to many Indian reservations and other tribal lands, as you can see in this map. For water management purposes, the Colorado River Basin is divided into an upper basin and the lower basin, as you can see on this next map here, you can see the upper and the lower basin. The dividing line between the two basins runs through Lee's Ferry, an important river crossing point since the mid-1800s, just downstream from Lake Powell. Lee's Ferry is the accounting point for the basin at which the main allocation of the river's flow between the upper and the lower basin is measured. The Colorado River is intensively managed with the flow of water controlled by 15 dams on the main stem of the Colorado River and many more on its tributaries. The Grand Canyon Dam with Lake Powell is the largest dam and reservoir on the upper Colorado River, providing important water storage in the upper basin. The main reservoir for the lower Colorado Basin is Lake Mead. Altogether, the reservoirs along the Colorado River can hold approximately four times the annual flow of the river, which is an impressive amount of water. Extensive aqueducts and canals divert and transport water from the river to fields and cities in cases hundreds of miles beyond the physical watershed. The dams of the Colorado River are critical sources of hydropower for the southwestern U.S., generating over 12 billion kilowatt hours of hydropower annually and providing more than 30 million residents with at least a portion of their electricity. 
It is believed that the Colorado River is the most studied, dammed, and litigated river in the U.S. The management of the Colorado River is challenging with the growing and changing needs of the users, including the environment. I hope this overview gave you a sense of the geography of the region and provides the background for details we'll be presenting in this module. You'll first hear about the history of the development of the Colorado River Basin. In the next lecture, we'll cover the climate in the Colorado River Basin. Then you'll hear about the Colorado River Water Supply and Demand Study. And in the final lecture, we provide an introduction to the Grand Canyon experimental flows. See you next time.